Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. Not too many Power BI updates this week, but we've got some great community posts for you. Be sure to comment down below if you can spot what's different in the shelf behind me. Also, if this is your first time visiting Guy in a Cube, thank you so much. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Ruth Pozuelo over at the Kerbal YouTube channels got a video looking at how do you create infographics inside of Power BI. There's some DAX magic involved with this and also a little bit of PowerPoint, which is a pretty cool technique. This can be a little fun and add some spice to your Power BI reports and she walks you through exactly how to do it. Infographics can be a great way to help visualize or storytell the data behind it. If this is something that interests you, be sure I've got the video linked up above, or you can check the link as always down in the description below, along with links for all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. Some more YouTube goodness, this time from Chris Finlan, who's a PM on the Power BI product team, looking at paginated reports. So he's got a playlist he put together with about eight videos or so. They're not very long. And if you're wanting to dig in and get started with paginated reports, this is a great resource for you to use. I know paginated reports can be a little bit tough. They're not like Power BI reports. I would say they're not definitely not as easy as Power BI reports. So you need to understand how the tool works and how everything comes together and all the different options that are available with Power BI paginated reports. So go download Power BI Report Builder and then check out this playlist to see how to actually use it. Laura Graham Brown over at the Hat Full of Data blog has got an item looking at Power Query joining inside of Microsoft Flow. So this is part of the broader Power Platform, right? Not Power BI, but it's Power Query, right? So it's similar on all the fronts where you can use Power Query. And when it comes to joining data, we're talking about you know merging queries with one another. And she walks through how you can do that and the different join types that are available when you go to merge. The thing I really love in the screenshot in there is the the icons they have for the join types. I, I wish that was in Power BI. Hopefully it'll come to Power BI at some point. But regardless of whether you're using Microsoft Flow or using Power BI or using data flows, merging and joining are things that you need to consider and the different join types that are available with that, you know, which one do you choose? So go ahead and check out this blog post if that's something you're interested in and something you're curious about. Links down below. Marco Russo over at SQLBI.com's got a blog post looking at how do you create a slicer that filters a more than one column? What? That's nuts. How do you even do that? He walks you through exactly how to do that in the great fashion that both Marco and Alberto do in their content. This is also some DAX magic, this time with some calculated columns and some calculated tables to get the result that you're looking for. What I love about this also is he looks at an example of where, you know, in one case you end up having a many to many relationship and why that may not be what you're really looking for and it affects subtotals, things of that nature. And then splitting that out again and using actually a bi-directional relationship. That's right, that will get you the result you need with minimal fuss. Marco does a great job in this blog post. Definitely check it out. If that is a scenario that you are looking to do in terms of filtering on multiple potential columns. This next blog post is about the Power BI mobile app and I'm really curious if you're using the mobile app itself and what do you think about it? If you are using it, you may have noticed a little bit of a different look to it. So it got an update to the look of the mobile app. So it was redesigned a little bit to make it better organized. This has a new homepage with it and also quick access to stuff you commonly use. It also takes advantage of the new corporate branding that may be applied to your tenant. So if you are using that and you switch into the new look, you will see that same branding theming that's part of the mobile app. But now you're asking me, why don't I see this? And the reason is, is you have to opt into it inside of the app. So check out this blog post for all the details, how you can opt into the new look and start taking advantage of it. And definitely give feedback. Links as always, down below. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned, maybe it was something I didn't. Let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. 
If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.